Rabbits, it's Trixie and it's a special day today because Eric and I just celebrated our fourth anniversary. Looking back, I'm a completely different person now than I was four years ago. Of course, all people change, especially when they enter a long-term relationship, but I noticed some personal changes that are related to the cultural influences of being with Eric in particular. Maybe some of you don't know yet, but Eric is from Venezuela, South America, and believe me, people there are very different to Germans. To sum it up in a few words, they are more open-hearted, warm, spontaneous, loud, crazy and chaotic, at least in my opinion. So in light of this fact or this observation, it's not surprising that over the years my personality changed because I call a Venezuelan my better half. And it actually changed quite drastically. I am a very different person now than I was in my early 20s. And of course not all of this is related to Eric, but he definitely had a huge influence on me. However, my evolution didn't happen overnight. It's a result of many moments full of confusion, conflicts and compromises, of acceptance and constant self-reflection, fights, tears, hugs and reconciliation. A simultaneous Germanization on Eric's side and a Venezuelification on mine. And that's normal and that's good. We didn't forget who we are, but we moved closer together in our heads, in our minds. Long story short, in today's video I want to tell you about typical and actually pretty old-fashioned German habits that I dropped due to my relationship with a Venezuelan. I decided to make this video because it shows how important it is to get to know other cultures. Rethink your own values and motives every once in a while and that there is more than one right way to handle things. In the end, we are not German, Venezuelan, Russian, French, Turkish, Italian. We are all people and we can always learn something from each other. So these are some typical old-fashioned German things I drastically changed my opinion on. First of all, my perspective on money and wealth. I remember my ex-boyfriend telling me that he wanted to have a house and a whirlpool before he would consider having kids. Bullsh**! Find a well-paid job, buy a house with a garden and a swimming pool, own at least two expensive cars, then find a beautiful woman, marry the sh** out of her, and then maybe, if you're not already 80 years old, you could consider kids. If you have any less than that, you are a loser. For quite some time in my life, I actually thought that this is a reasonable kind of thinking. But why? Nowadays, I actually pity people having these thoughts, especially when they stand in their own way, fighting for their dreams because they care more about status and social acceptance. Sure, you shouldn't live under a bridge when you decide to have kids, but if you really, really want to have a family, then you can be happy with a lot less than what I mentioned before. What matters much more than money is love for your partner and then for your child. Love is everything. And when you both feel ready to have children, then chances are high that you are. Guess what? There is no perfect order for everything. You can as well keep working on the other things later in your life. Don't make your dream what you feel is right dependent on stupid superficial social status obligations. Eric definitely changed my view on these things because he is a total family person and many Latin Americans are. I don't want to imply that they don't care about career and money. They also do. But everything there seems to be a bit more balanced, a little less social pressure and expectations, and a bit more just do what you feel is right. And to me, that's very refreshing. Talking about jobs and career, there's another point I want to raise. Thanks to my relationship with Eric, I learned that fighting for a dream is much more important than fighting for a certain job position, a high income or reputation. What is a high income worth if you hate what you do? Or if you're constantly bored? Or if you only do what you do to impress others because there's nothing more about your life that makes you feel proud? Or if it means sacrificing your actual dreams? I studied psychology. My father, for example, didn't like that in the first place. But, you know, at least I could become something like a doctor. Even though psychology is not about real diseases. So he was fine with that. However, I ended up in the video game industry. Don't you want to get a real job at some point? Well, okay, take the job, but you should keep looking. You want to have kids later, then you should burn double of what you earn right now. Oh, it's a pity. So much wasted potential. You should maybe keep studying. Just a random selection of things people that are actually very close to me told me. But, well, surprise, it's what I like doing. And I was getting along, 
So let me not even dive into what people told me when they heard about YouTube. So in general, my experience is that creative or social media jobs are very often frowned upon in Germany. Also, being a freelancer or self-employed is often met with lots of raised eyebrows. What happened? No one wanted to employ you? Okay, so are you on a weird ego trip or something? A freelancer? But that's so complicated and risky. I don't even give you a month. You will totally fail. Yeah, maybe. But what exactly do I lose from trying? I mean, what if that's my dream? If I like to do things my way? Seriously, where would we all be if everyone suddenly stopped believing in themselves? So as you can see, by studying psychology and then taking a job in the video game industry, I was already a rebel against these thoughts. I was never the typical career person, but different to back then, I lost my bad conscience about it. A few years ago, I felt super uncomfortable with taking these decisions. People all around me were telling me that I was doing it wrong and I kind of believed them. I was still doing my thing, yes, but I was full of doubts and my self-confidence was like, <laughs> now having Eric by my side, I don't listen to those people anymore. I'm more confident about trusting my own gut feeling and following my passion. Because from the beginning, he felt my spirit. He wasn't thinking about social acceptance and what people expected from us. He was proud of me for working hard and achieving what I achieved already. And he never pushed me into earning more money and he never questioned that this is what I like doing. I think people in South America are more relaxed when it comes to career and social status. They like to define their own worth by fighting for life goals and showing to others that they achieved something just by themselves. I don't know, maybe it's the warmer weather that makes those people think I can do and achieve whatever I want, but I really, really like it. Eric works in the game industry too. His brother crafts surfboards. And even though they both study, they're both intelligent, they're fine with what they are doing, even though they could earn more money by doing something else. Except this something else is nothing they enjoy doing. So who does it right? I'd say that both perspectives are understandable and okay, but I chose my side. I like this more free and independent kind of thinking. It makes me feel that I can be who I am, let out what I have inside of me. And yeah, money is important, money rules this world, but you can be happy in a flat with one car and no swimming pool. I don't need more than that when I can have love and passion and creativity in my life instead. The next thing I want to talk about is privacy and something that I call the NPC problem. Personally, I would say that many Germans are very kept to themselves. They only mind their own business. And that's considered a good trait. Many Germans seem to be constantly worried about crossing a line or disturbing others. And on one hand, I can see the point. You should follow your own goals and not be depending on other people. But not in this extreme way, maybe. You know, there's a difference between bothering somebody and caring about somebody. Intrusiveness and annoyance versus social interest and a friendly approach. So let me explain the NPC problem to you. For all non-gamers out there, NPC means non-playable character. And sometimes I feel that in Germany, people see each other as non-playable characters. They know they play themselves and everyone else is just environment decoration. Let's say you enter a bakery because you want to buy bread. Then the person selling the bread to you is the person that sells bread to you. But you don't actually consider him or her another human being with feelings and intentions and dreams and hopes. It's basically an institution or a machine that serves a simple purpose that coincidentally looks like another human being. Of course, that's an extreme example. Not all Germans are like that and we don't act like this in every situation. But at least I have found myself doing that from time to time. Forgetting that the people around me are people. Eric, however, is completely different. For him, everyone and everything is people. He doesn't see the baker, the doctor, or the policeman. He says Hannelore and Hans and Gustav and Kevin. And he totally sees the potential of getting to know these people and become friends with them. 
I remember that when we first moved together, we didn't know where to buy a washing machine in town. So he suggested to just enter the bakery and ask around. The person selling our breakfast to us, the people sitting there. I mean, maybe somebody was in a similar situation and they could help us along. And I still know how confused I was by this suggestion. Asking random people about washing machines? Wouldn't they consider that annoying? They are not official washing machine experts. So who am I to ask them about washing machines? I don't know what you are thinking about this situation right now. I know it sounds a bit weird, but in the end, doesn't he have a point? Cannot we approach strangers sometimes for asking a simple question? For getting to know new people? What is it that makes us hesitate so much? Cannot I ask the person selling bread to me how he or she is? It can also be even simpler things. For example, saying hello to a person passing by with a cute dog. Asking the pizza delivery guy, hey, you're right, is the evening busy or calm? Eric actually changed phone numbers with three different pizza delivery guys already. Just because he asked them how they were and they started a short conversation. And if you think about it, that's not annoying or embarrassing. That's actually pretty impressive. To me, in Germany, too many people seem to live in their very own bubble. And that also includes me. And I know that this actually makes me feel lonely sometimes. I'm too afraid of being rejected so that I stay inside of my bubble, not daring to talk to anybody. And I shouldn't do that. Of course, it's okay when you need your own time and space, but that's not always the case. Sometimes I do want to talk to people and I'm too afraid. Being in a relationship with Eric reminded me that the humanoids around me are actual people like me that I can interact with if I want to and usually they don't feel disturbed. They are actually happy of getting to know another person. So yeah, seeing Eric more open and outgoing definitely changed my personality. And I think for the better. Something related to the not seeing other people as people problem is tolerance. Just before we moved here, we lived in a house with six different parties. Therefore, the different mailboxes are next to the front door. And one day, my daughter threw a dry leaf into the mailbox of another neighbor. Not a big deal, you may say, and that's exactly what I thought. But the next day, the neighbor confronted me about this horrible incident. And one hour later, there was a sticky note on the mailbox saying, This is not a garbage bin. Okay, so why am I telling you this? In my opinion, life cannot always be about structure and order and schedules. Life is dry leaves in your mailbox sometimes, put there by little curious toddler fingers experiencing the world. But what changed about my perspective is that before, I would have actually been ashamed that this happened. I would have felt guilty after my neighbor confronted me, afraid even that I would get into trouble with my landlord or something like that. But now I'm just more confident and even slightly proud of these little mistakes that sometimes happen. The fact that my daughter threw a dry leaf in a mailbox is not actually a mistake. In this situation, I feel that it's much worse what the neighbor did than what my daughter and I did. Why would somebody be so reproachful concerning something so harmless and simple and even a bit cute? It was only a dry leaf and it only happened one single time. You don't have to seek hate and malevolence around every corner. Going back to the NPC thing, understand that other people are also people and people make mistakes and people don't mean it in a bad way all the time. You know, life can be much more fun if you are not an asshole. So even though I was already kinda on a good track with this one, Eric definitely helped me in solidifying my perspective. See actual people in people and meet them with love and tolerance. Last but not least, the typical things that everybody connects to Germans. Time management and planning and punctuality. Concerning this, my opinion didn't change that much. I still consider being in time and planning things beforehand a sign of respect and being considerate. But what I also understood is that it's okay if not everything goes to plan. Spontaneous activities can sometimes be the best. And if something takes a bit longer or it takes another turn, that's not the end of the world. Also, Eric explained to me at some point why he is the way he is. 
Latin Americans also don't want to be disrespectful by behaving the way they do. It's related to the environment that they grew up in and that they adapted to. Eric told me that in Venezuela there is no bus at 11.07. You just walk to the bus station and then you wait there between 10 minutes or 2 hours until a bus picks you up. So obviously in all his life no one ever made plans in the fashion of you have to be there at 7.15, at 7.20, the doors will be shut. It's just another life standard, another environment, other habits. No one there living in Germany wants to piss Germans off. And looking at it this way again opened my eyes and I noticed that I had been a bit prejudiced. There are always more reasons and motives than we see explaining certain behavior. And we should always be very careful before we judge or call our way the right way. So summing up this super long video, I can say that my relationship to Eric, a Venezuelan, shifted my life focus. In general, it shifted a lot from what do others expect from me and what is socially acceptable to what makes me and others happy. Where do I see my own individual worth? Who do I want to be in this life? Thank you, Eric, for teaching me these very important life lessons. But just to clarify, I don't want to imply that Germans cannot be good people. It's just that I have been influenced by too many black sheep by too many outdated and old-fashioned perspectives. And I personally needed a Venezuelan to open my eyes and change my point of view. So you don't have to try to find a Venezuelan boyfriend or girlfriend now. I'm pretty sure you'll be on the right track and you'll make the best out of your life by just rethinking your values from time to time. Be open, be open to different cultures, look to the right and to the left. Now I'm very curious, what do you think about all of this? What are your thoughts on this topic? How has looking into different cultures or being with somebody from another place changed your point of view on certain things? What is your experience and what would be your advice? What are the life lessons that you learned because of different cultures? All right, Babbits, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If so, please leave a thumbs up because that would make me very, very happy. Of course, if you want, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram or Facebook and here is a video that you should definitely check out as well. Subscribe to Don't Trust the Rabbit for more videos like this and in case you want to support my channel even a bit more, you can also find me on Patreon. I would appreciate your help so, so much. Now I wish you all a wonderful day. Try to be the best person you can be and hopefully we are going to see each other in my next video. Bye!